So this was attempt one. Overall, the paper looked nice. Um, it smelled bad. <laughs> I couldn't paint on it. And it was really lumpy. It did not dry smooth or even straight. So I am going to write off attempt number one as a fail. Now after this, I vowed to never make paper again. But of course, me being me, <laughs> I ended up buying more cotton a week later and soaking it for a few days this time because I wanted to give it another go. And so I did. So this is my setup here. So I have my dad's blender, um, this mold and decal that I didn't clean from last time. So there's still residue that I can't get off. I have my towel, my sponge, I have an iron over there and all of my cotton. I went through the same process, minus the liquid starch, got my workstation ready and started blending up my cotton, which was very difficult to blend. I thought that having it soak for two or three days would help break down the cotton a little bit, but it was, it was really tough. I ended up ripping up the bigger chunks with my hands and I worked batch by batch. So I used two packs of cotton, so cotton balls and cotton pads, 200 of each, um, which isn't a, a whole lot, but it still took me an hour to blend everything. Okay, I'm on my second batch of cotton, and my dad suggested that I add some ice to the mixture just to give uh, the blade something to latch onto. This blender's having a hard time breaking down the cotton and I think any blender would. So let's see how that works. I'd say you should probably use a better blender, but at the same time, <laughs> don't ruin your blender. <laughs> I had to work in really small batches, uh, but eventually I ended up with everything blended. I actually attempted making paper with just the cotton and it turned out super lumpy and uneven. So I had to add some paper, which I also soaked because I've grown and learned since my first attempt at making paper. And I knew that I would probably end up needing some actual paper just to hold everything together. And raise it up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was really uneven. Um, I wonder if I have to do anything here. How do people get it so even? I don't understand. Okay. This might be a little thick for one sheet. Yeah, that's really thick. Let me try this again. like holes in it. I'm not sure how to get it even. So some parts are like really thick, other parts are too thin. Okay. I might need to add paper to the mix just to hold everything together. So I don't think this is going to be 100% cotton, <laughs> but it'll probably be um, maybe 75%, but I'll get like all the proper measurements. So this was definitely the smart move and it actually really helped a lot. And this is where the 15% recycled paper comes from. So that's why my paper is not 100% cotton because I just didn't see it working. My dad was watching me throughout all of this and he had his doubts about the cotton. He advised me to maybe um, throw some ice into the blender just to help it break down everything a little bit better. I'm not sure if it helped, but I did it anyways. And um, if you're having trouble breaking down your cotton, it might help, <laughs> it might not, who's to say? I feel like logically it, it makes sense, but who knows? So after tossing all of my raw materials in and adding some more water to my big container, I ended up making my first sheet of paper, which actually turned out pretty good. It was definitely one of my better ones. 
I went through the same process. I flipped the paper onto my towel, I removed the excess water with a sponge, and then I put another towel on top instead of folding it over this time, and I pressed it down using the decal. Okay, there's my <laughs> questionable patch job, and I'm just gonna press it down even more with this so it's uniform. Then I put another towel on top, and this was a smoother towel. Plugged in my iron on a low steam setting. You have to make sure that there's some steam because um, during one attempt, I forgot to turn the steam on and the paper ended up sticking to the towel. So on low steam, I ended up pressing down the paper in the hopes that it would smooth it out. And I do think that this actually helped it a little bit just because I had to do some more ghetto patchwork. <laughs> And after ironing it down, um, it really helped to incorporate my patch job onto the paper, so at least it helped with that. Afterwards, I added an extra step and I sandwiched the paper in between a towel and also in between two boards of wood, which I stood on <laughs> as I worked on the following sheets of paper. And I didn't get any footage of this step, but I, I actually think that this helped a good amount. Uh, afterwards, I would remove the paper from the wood panels and I would move them over to my drying surface, which was a white table that um, I just had underneath my balcony. At this stage, I remember being very proud of my paper and happy with how white the sheets were. There were some particles just from working outside, so I got a little bit of dirt, some random like little leaves and sticks. I even almost got a bug. I had a bug walking across one of my sheets of paper. I had to flick it off. But just know that if you do work outside, you might also get little particles as well. There you go, I love how white it is. There are like these weird particles that just there from working outdoors. I feel like once this dries, it'll be harder to get them off, so. But you know, it adds character, so that's fine. Well, let me fix that there. I really like this sheet. I think this was, I don't know if it was the first or second one that I made, but I like how it turned out. This one here is definitely a lot thinner. It's more delicate. Um, oh, there's like weird fibers here. Oh no. Oh God. Okay. Yeah, I'm like messing up my paper. There are like little dirt marks. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so hopefully this will dry a lot less stiff than the last batch. Now I'm gonna um, need to get my iron prepped because it's not, no longer hot. So I have to plug that in. And then um, while that's heating up, I'm gonna get a couple more sheets of paper ready. So I ended up with 12 sheets of 85% cotton paper. A few of them ended up a little bit yellow. Uh, I got them a bit dirty. I think the wood panels I used were a little bit dirty and it just seeped through the towel after the towels got wet and onto uh, the paper. So that was kind of unfortunate, but you know, it's no big deal. And I left them overnight to dry. Hey guys, it's the next day. It's about 5 p.m. Okay, anyways, uh, you're getting my reaction. Because I didn't check on these this morning. I was flying out of here. I was actually a couple minutes late for work. So let's see. Ooh. Kind of stiff. <laughs> uh, oh, actually, okay. This one's not as stiff. It's nice. Probably because this one, this one here is a little bit thicker. Let's see. Interesting. So it's definitely feeling a little bit rough. Um, some of these, you can see, it's like a little bit yellow here. I'll show you. If you compare the two, it looks really yellow. On its own, it's not too bad. Um, yeah, interesting. I wonder how these will take watercolors. I hope it's not just gonna absorb straight into the page, but like, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. You can see like my patch job here when you hold it up into the sun. Look how weird that looks. Um, yeah. 
some of them are a little bit uneven, like you can see there's some holes here. But they do feel pretty sturdy. So we'll collect them and then, oh god, this one really turned yellow. That's kind of sad because this sheet actually, in terms of the thickness, it turned out really nice. So it would have been cool to have it nice and white. But yeah, anyways, I'm going to bring these puppies in and um, I'll test them out. So after they were completely dry, they were quite stiff. Not as stiff as before, thankfully. A few were kind of uneven <laughs> in terms of thickness. And some ended up being yellow because they actually flew with the wind. <laughs> That's why when I went to check on them the next day, um, there were all these items on top of them, including a broom. Um, my dad saw that my sheets were all over the ground, so he picked them all up and um, weighed them down <laughs> with different items. Um, I didn't think these ones I I'd be able to save, but you know what? Why not just try the um, aluminum sulfate gelatin mixture once again on this instead of just gelatin, and we'll see if it helps at all. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Um, I don't know how to feel like I don't want to get my hopes up so ah, yeah anyways just like last time I'm gonna brush it on with my where is it my Dollarama brush right here and um, I guess I'll see you guys once I'm finished overall I was really happy with how everything turned out so far but I knew I had a strong feeling that I would run into the same issue because I did not size my paper. And turns out I did. I didn't get any footage of this, but I did test out using my watercolors on the cotton sheets. And again, the paper just soaked it up like a sponge. So the next step was that I mixed gelatin and alum this time, and I added this mixture to my paper and ended off with my own handmade watercolor, lumpy, uneven paper, but hey, <laughs> it worked. Hey guys, this is the status of my paper. After adding the gelatin and aluminum sulfite sizing, um, it turned really stiff. So I think it, with the last paper, I think the cornstarch is what made it stiff. And then I added two layers of the gelatin, like for this paper here. And now it's like, it's real, real stiff. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's like staying straight. Um, the smell is not as bad as before. I think the alum helped. And let me smell this one here. It has kind of a weird smell, but you have to like put your nose right up to it and give it a good whiff <laughs> in order to get that weird scent. Um, also, I don't know if you could see on camera, but the sizing made some parts of it shiny, which is interesting. Um, yeah, so anyways, I'm just gonna paint on it and we'll see what happens. And I really hope that this works out, but I guess we'll find out. So if this is something that you are wanting to try and you have any questions, I can help you with my limited expertise, or I'll try at least. Uh, if your paper turned out much better than mine, then please, please give me some feedback, give me some tips, because even though I vowed not to do this again, I honestly probably will. <laughs> But I think the next time I make handmade paper, I'm just gonna use recycled paper because I think I could end up with some solid sheets without incorporating any cotton. If you're a pro paper maker, I don't even know why you're watching this. You're probably cringing throughout it. Um, but I have a whole new appreciation for your craft. <laughs> so major props, I applaud you. And if you have any tips, please feel free to share with me and with everyone else who watches this video. Also stay tuned for my other experiment where I'm making my own lake pigments out of um, berries, beets, and different types of produce with the intention of creating my own watercolors. And the end goal is to create a piece using my own handmade paper and my own handmade harvested watercolors. Uh, so we'll see how that works and I really hope that doesn't end in disaster. So far it's going pretty good but I still have a few more pigments to create or to attempt to create so we'll see how that works. But if you enjoyed this video and if you want to see um, the future videos that I just mentioned then please 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 subscribe it would mean so much and um, leave a comment down below 
the usual give me a like if you enjoyed this and you know what it's a free country so give me a dislike if you didn't enjoy this <laughs> and until next time as usual stay creative stay healthy julie rocks signing out peace